If there was ever a trick that could quickly boost your quant score in the GRE or the GMAT, it would be this, how to pick smarter numbers. I want to demonstrate how picking the boundary of a set of values can be just the right idea, the smartest type of number to get a range of questions correct. Let me try and demonstrate with this question. As always, feel free to pause the video, try the question yourself to see if you even need the trick. But there are going to be two following questions of increasing difficulty too. Jade's profit in 2022 was more than two thirds, but less than three quarters of her revenue in 2022. If her profit in 2022 was $24,000, which of the following could be her revenue in 2022? Tick all that apply. Now, so many students get caught up over the fact that it said more than two thirds, but less than three quarters. So they desperately try and think of a fraction in that range. Maybe they think 70%, seven over 10, plug the numbers in, work it out, but then kind of get confused because it doesn't really match any of the answers and start to panic. I'm here to tell you the central lesson of this video. We are going to pick the boundary numbers, in this case, the boundary fractions, even though the question said that they are not allowed. Even though it said her profit was more than two thirds, we're gonna pretend it equals two thirds of her revenue. When it said her profit was less than three quarters of her revenue, we are going to pretend that it was equal to three quarters of her revenue, even though that's not allowed. I know it's kind of breaking the rules, but this is the kind of fun we can have on the GRE and the GMAT. So let me try and demonstrate. Let's start by pretending that her profit of 24,000 was equal to two thirds of her revenue. We don't know her revenue, so we need algebra, we need an equation. 24,000, her profit, was equal to two thirds of revenue. So I've written 24,000 equals two thirds of R, R standing for revenue. Now how I've solved it on screen is by multiplying both sides by three and then dividing both sides by two. You may do it by dividing both sides by two thirds. I just like this approach of getting rid of fractions as soon as I see them. And you could say it's the simplest way without any fancy calculations or fraction tricks. Either way, do you notice that we calculate her revenue as being $36,000? I know what you're thinking, but it said more than two thirds, Philip. This is not allowed. Doesn't matter. We're going to move on to the next boundary and see what happens. Notice it said her profit was less than three quarters of her revenue. So what we're going to do is pretend her profit was equal to three quarters of her revenue. So 24,000, that was her profit, remember? equals three quarters of revenue. Multiply both sides by four, 96,000 equals three R, divide by three, 32,000 equals R. Now, even though these two values are not actually allowed, 32,000 and 36,000, they show us the edge of the boundary. That's what's so beautiful about this method. It shows you the edge of what's allowed. And therefore, without using too much brain power, we can see that her revenue must have been somewhere in between 32,000 and 36,000. We're not actually allowed the boundaries because yes, they did say more than two thirds and less than three quarters. So we can't specifically have 32,000 or 36,000. So if those were options, we wouldn't click those, but we can click anything in between that. In this case, that would be 33,000, and 35,000. Both of those are okay, they're in that range. But the key here was the principle of using the boundary even though they said the boundary wasn't allowed. Let's try to apply this principle to the next question. The question says, x is greater than one, what's bigger, quantity a, two to the x plus one, or quantity b, three to the x minus one? Now normally most people looking at this would either give up because they can't solve the algebra, how do we solve an equation when there's powers of x, it's really hard. Or hopefully a lot of them would go, okay, I need to pick numbers, great. But then you know what they would do? Now put your hand up if this is you, you would start with x equals two. I understand, you know, it's bigger than one, so let's start with two. 
The problem is that's going to get you the wrong answer. If you just start with two and then do another number, maybe like five, and both times you'll notice quantity B is bigger, as I'm about to demonstrate. But notice the question never said that X had to be an integer. So we're not going to start all the way up at two. Let me show you briefly what would happen if we started at two. If X is two, quantity A would be two to the two plus one, which is five. Quantity B would be three to the two minus one, which is eight, and quantity B would be bigger. And then quickly, if we try a bigger number like five, quantity A becomes, what is that, 33. Quantity B becomes, quick mental maths, what is that, 243, 242. So quantity B would be way, way bigger, and therefore people will be really confident quantity B is bigger. That's actually the wrong answer though. Now here's the scary thing. Even the smartest of students might try and get around that by picking something like 1.5. The trouble is, working out a power of 1.5 is really hard. Okay, even if you know 1.5 is three over two, so you have to do the root and then cube it, you still actually get quantity B as being bigger. It's crazy, I know, but even 1.5 won't work here, even if you're able to calculate it somehow. So how on earth do we solve this? We use the boundary, even though they said the boundary is not allowed. So we're going to use x is 1, even though they said that x has to be greater than 1. The actual crossing over point is about 1.4. Even 1.5 would be too high. That's why we're going to go all the way down to the boundary. If we plug in x is 1, notice what happens. Quantity a becomes 2 to the 1 plus 1, which is 3. Quantity b becomes 3 to the 1 minus 1, which is 2. So in this case, quantity a is greater. Now again, I know what many students would say, but they said that X had to be greater than one, so why are you picking one? Well, technically, what I'm actually picking is like 1.000001. So it's just above one. And that would give me basically the same result as three and two, so quantity A would be bigger. So I've proven that sometimes quantity A can be bigger, and of course, with a number like two or five, quantity B can be bigger. So the actual answer is gonna be D, because sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's higher. Sometimes quantity A is bigger, sometimes quantity B. But we only reveal that by picking the boundary of X equals one, even though that's not allowed. Now, I think I've proven the principle, but let me give you one final difficult question involving absolutes, where we can really solidify this technique of using smarter boundary numbers. If you're not so familiar with absolute values, do check out my video. I think it's called Absolute Values in a Nutshell. Either way, try to pause the video, do it on your own, and then afterwards see how I did it. The question is this. The absolute value of x is less than two, and y is bigger than two, but less than five. What's bigger, quantity a, 0 0.05, or quantity b, y to the power of x? Well, clearly quantity a is a really small number. So our goal is to see whether we can get quantity B to be lower than it. It's so easy to make quantity B bigger, for example, Y being three and X being one, that would be three to the power of one, which is three. So easy to make quantity B bigger, but can we make quantity B smaller? How are we gonna make it smaller? Well, we're gonna make it smaller by making the power as small as possible, making the exponent X as small as possible. And the truth is, it can go negative. Did you realize that? The absolute value of x being less than two, using our knowledge of absolutes, means that x can be all the way from negative two to two. Because when you have the negative, if you put it in absolute values, it becomes positive. So even something like negative 1.5 in absolutes becomes 1.5, which is less than two. Notice x can't be something like negative three, because negative three in absolutes becomes three and three is not less than two. So we have this range of values for X, which is between negative two and two. What's the smallest that we're allowed? Please don't say negative one. The principle of this video is that we go all the way to the boundary, which in this case is negative two. That's the smallest exponent we can have. Even though it's technically not allowed, I know, we're gonna go all the way down to negative two. So the power will be negative two. Now the question is, do we make y as big as possible, which will be five, or as small as possible? Well, when you get down to fractions, the answer is actually that you make y as big as possible. 
The truth is that when x is negative 2, we will end up with a fraction. A negative exponent causes it to be 1 over that same power. If you're not sure about that, do watch my video on everything you need to know about exponents. But either way, here, the bigger the number, the fraction, the denominator is going to get bigger and therefore the fraction gets smaller. Let me try and demonstrate. We're going to make y as big as possible. In this case, it's going to be 5, which is the boundary. And 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. And that's a lot smaller than 1 over 2 squared, which is a quarter. So we're making y as big as possible, 5, x as small as possible, negative 2. And it gives us the answer of 0 0.04. And again, one final time, I know that that exact value is not allowed which means that we can't actually get that low. We can't go all the way to 0 0.04. We have to be a bit, bit bigger than that. Something like 0 0.041, but that's still gonna be less than quantity A, which is 0 0.05. And therefore we've proven that quantity B can go lower than quantity A. So the answer is again, D, because it could be lower quantity B or it could be higher. If you've learned anything from this video, please do leave a like and a comment and let me know. Have a wonderful day.